Hi everyone, we're back. We're on week six and we're going to do some picture memory experiment. Well, one picture memory experiment today. This will involve presenting people pictures at different, uh, with different durations in a first encoding phase. And then in a second recognition memory test, we will do um, present pictures again. And some of them that were shown before and some of them that weren't. And uh, take measures of whether people can tell the difference judge whether they can um, recognize the picture. So let's head over to our studio. I've got my week six blog post up and ready, and I'm going to cover two things, make it quick, really. First of all, let's replicate uh, a classic paper by Potter and Levy from 1969. It's titled Recognition Memory for a Rapid Sequence of Pictures. We'll talk about this paper for a second, see what was in there, and then we'll go ahead and program a version of this in JS Psych. All right, here's the paper. It's called, uh, same, yeah, that's the name of the paper. It's not too long. You could go and get it from the Brooklyn College Library and read it yourself. And basically what happens in this paper is people are shown series of unrelated pictures at different durations. We scroll down to the graph here so I can make this a little bit bigger. The x-axis shows some of the different durations that pictures were shown for. So 2000, that's two seconds. I think about one, two, you know, however long that is. And then we've got one second, half a second, and we're getting down into some smaller durations like 125 milliseconds, which would just be like a little flash on there. Uh, so we'll replicate something like this here. We'll use a range of durations, uh, probably from 125 to 2000. And we might do this exactly using the exact same numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's seven of them. Or maybe we'll choose four. Uh, if we double them, do 125, 250, 500, and 1,000, um, maybe 2,000 as well. Uh, okay, so what does the result show here? Um, well, if we scroll back up to the procedure, after the participants viewed these pictures uh, presented with these different durations, some short, some long, they were shown pictures one at a time and ask to say yes if they were sure they saw the picture before, maybe if they thought, you know, maybe they did but they weren't positive and otherwise say no. So, and they were shown some pictures that were from the display and some that weren't. This is the results. Uh, there's actually results from two experiments here. The open circles show probability of response. This is a probability of um, saying yes when it's uh, and when it's true that they did see the picture before. And you can see here there's this nice little function. When the picture was shown for two seconds, uh, there's a high probability of being correct. And that probability goes down and down and down the shorter the picture is presented. This is, you know, it seems pretty sensible. Uh, the more time you have to look at the picture, the better you are able to remember it later on. And the shorter, the worse. So this sets us up to try to replicate this for ourselves. Uh, this sh I would imagine that this result would be pretty easy to replicate. That is, if we part if we you know redid this experiment essentially the same way, we'd find a pretty similar result. Um, I'm going to take some liberties in replicating this just to get uh, through the example. So I'm not going to try to do every exact same thing. Um, let's go for it. See what happens here. I am not prepared, so let's first of all go back to our Stroop experiment. And I'm going to grab one, maybe this one here. And I'm going to just copy this 
over to the picture memory and I'm going to call this picture.html so that I'm starting off with something. We could be starting with, whoa, going back too far. Uh, go to working directory. We could have started with the uh, JS Psych tutorial. That would have probably been fine as well. So let's see where we're at. We're loading JS Psych, that's good. Loading the HTML keyboard response. I think that should be fine for our needs actually we, because the HTML, remember, this is present, allowing us to present arbitrary HTML, which could include an image. So I think this would be pretty useful. And a, we, could, we could probably do the whole experiment with these three things. We will be initializing JS Psych, so we'll just keep all of this here. We'll be starting a timeline. Here's a simple welcome message. That would be fine. We're going to have to change instructions. And we, you know, maybe this is the first thing that we could consider. Uh, we're going to have a phase in our experiment with some encoding instructions. Uh, so let me go ahead and write some that I think that could go there. All right. I've got a, some basic instructions. I would probably workshop these. Uh, and but for our purposes, I think they're fine. In this task, you'll you will you will be shown a series of pictures. The pictures will be presented quickly, and they will re remain on the screen for different durations. Pay attention to the pictures as best you can. After the encoding phase, you will be given a recognition test for the pictures that were presented. Press any key to begin. So that should uh, work for us right now. Imagine what would happen next is the participant would move on to a screen and they would be shown several pictures, uh, one at a time for different durations. So we have a whole bunch of things to consider at this point. How many pictures are we going to show for each of these durations? Which durations are we going to choose? Uh, we could take some cues from the paper. I believe they had... Um, I have to look more closely here. There's 128 pictures assigned randomly to eight films. The restriction that no two pictures likely be confused. Uh, okay, it looks like that's roughly how they were dealing with that. Okay. Well, we don't have their pictures. We could try to find pictures that might be approximately the same. What I've already gone ahead and done is went to a website. This is uh, Tim Brady's website. He's a vision researcher, psychologist, and he's got a resource page and shares some of his different stimulus, uh, stimulus sets. So this one page here has a whole bunch of different pictures that you could download and use in your experiment. I downloaded this one, 100 objects in two states times two exemplars. I think that'll work. Uh, the, you know, this one, 100 exemplar pairs. You know what, I'm gonna download this one too. I, I have a feeling this might be a little bit better for us. So let me go and check that out. Okay, I downloaded that set of images. I unzipped it and these are all the images. So let's see what we got. Pencil sharpener, uh, hole punch, and snakehead, starfish, star. So we've got some repeats. So one of the things about this image set is we've got the same, two different examples of the same thing. So this is an image set of different types of objects. And actually we're kind of previewing roughly what this experiment would look like by me just sort of going through the pictures here. If we did, this is about 500 milliseconds each. Um, this is about 250 or 100 or so, so that's much faster. Here's two seconds on 
two, one, two, so these are all pictures of objects, but they're all, you know, pretty different from each other, I would say. We could use this set, I think, for our purposes. And um, let's start with that. Okay, so I went and took some of those images and I put them in this folder here. The images, they're supposed to be a hundred different objects and each object appears twice. So different examples of the same object. So there should be 200 pictures there. Um, the labeling of the pictures is a little bit inconsistent. What I tried to do, or I probably messed this up. What's this? That's a garden shovel. Is this a garden hose? Okay, fine. Um, I, I got 104 images in here, just quickly going through them. They should all be different objects. I might have made some mistakes. This is the kind of thing you'd want to be really careful about. So in our case, um, you'd want all the images to be different images, no repeats of the same image. I think we're close. Again, I would go through more closely to verify. I would probably also relabel these. Some of these have different um, numbers for names and uh, a lot of them start with a like a basket a balloon and stuff like that and some of them don't start with a some of them have a number that says if they're the first or the second one and some of them don't uh, it, if we were trying to do this um, for a an experiment that we would roll out and not just a tutorial uh, we would try to make all these things um, uh, adopt the same sort of syntax for defining them and declaring so that we can be sure about our design as we move forward. As I'm going down here, I see we had some goals from our Stroop experiment. So let's do this again, set goals. So we need to get some pictures uh, and then figure out how to present them using JS Psych. So this whole stage, uh, we'll have to do something here to be able to present our pictures. So this chunk of code for the Stroop experiment, what it was doing was systematically creating a JavaScript object that had each of our Stroop stimuli. In our case, we, we are going to need to have a list of pictures um, that we'll be presenting. So we'll need to know the file names for each of these things. There are, these are the file names right here. We'll need to get them into a JavaScript object. Okay, at this point we're, we've come into a little annoying problem. You see here with the Stroop example, uh, I've got an array and we're just listing different words or colors. This, this was pretty easy to make by hand. I'd like something similar uh, an array, but with each of the file names from these images. So how do we get that? How do we get all these file names to be printed as an array like this? Um, we could do this a whole bunch of different ways. And for, for now, what I'm going to do is just uh, make a little R file for myself and do it in R. So to do that, I'm just going to make a little R script. And where we're going to save this in week six blog should be week six here. Um, I'm going to call this resources. So now I'm switching programming languages briefly to accomplish a different kind of job. And this job is I'm going to list the files in images. So when I do this, um, oh, that's annoying. Uh, I need to be in that directory. I thought I would be. 
Uh, let's see. Went to list files. Where in picture memory images? So because this isn't a QMD file, it doesn't automatically know that we're in this folder. So I had to give it the full file path relative to the project. All right. So those are all the list of the file names. I'm just going to put them into a variable called file names. So that should appear in our environment right here, just like this. Okay, so there's a library called RIO. You would have installed that last week. We can use the export function. I'm exporting the variable name file names, which has all those file names. Uh, yep, and I'm exporting it to this location to my blog six picture memory folder. And I guess it's in the images folder. That's well, actually, I don't want to put it in the images folder. I'm going to put it in right in here. It's going to be saved as stimuli.js with format equals JSON. So that gives us this file here. And all that we've accomplished is we've created the beginning of a JavaScript array, or we, as you can see, we've we've got a bracket here. Um, we could put a semicolon. We're gonna say, uh, how about this? All pictures equals. Uh, we could even be a little bit more clear. Var all pictures equals. And there, there we have made a brand new JS file that all, all that it does is it, it has this one JavaScript array with all the names of our files. Which is neat. Um, I, I suppose, I mean, depending on how we want to do this, we can do this later if we want. Uh, notice the path, that is the folder images, is not part of this file name. And I, I guess we could change that part. I think that's an option here. Maybe let's do that. We'll have full names equals true. So when I redo this now, uh, oh, I don't want that full of a name. Okay. Let's turn that off. We'll deal with this a different way. So we just got the file names. We'll have to be, we'll have to remember this later on. So we head back to the, our um, experiment that we're making. I would like to be able to bring in all of those pictures as a JavaScript array. I could potentially just go here and copy this whole thing right into that file, and that would be fine. Um, at the same time, I could go up to the top and link to this script. So just write script src equals, close that off. And then the location of this, we could give it the name stimuli.js. So that now when we load this file in the browser, we should have the name this um, oops I need to uh, redo every time every time I reran that it overwrote the file so I had to put this back uh, what did I call this all pictures all pictures equals so we could, I mean, I guess I would probably try to test this out at this point. Um, I haven't set myself up to do that yet. So I think, let's try, let's. Blank that out. And see what happens if I load this in a browser.
All right, I'm getting a couple errors here. Uh, I, what did we, I think this was called instructions before and not encoding instructions. And I deleted this variable stroop stimuli. So just for us to get this going. Okay, so I think I fixed the errors for debugging. The point that I want to, what I want to learn is if I type all pictures, there it is. Okay, so it's being loaded. These are the picture file names. Great. You can head back to our experiment. Um, I do want to call this encoding instructions. And down here, where it tries to load instructions, I'm going to change this to encoding instructions. Um, we're now about to rewrite this portion in order to, instead of creating a, a stroop stimuli object, we want to create an encoding stimuli object that um, could have the file names of the images. So I'm going to go through delete things that we don't need and talk about what we want to do here. I think we're only going to need one loop, so we don't need this inner loop. Um, let's see, we're going to be We want to figure out how long to present each image. We are going to call this encoding stimuli. I think this would be better if this was tabbed out like that. All right, so the stimulus is going to be um, an H. We're going to be using the HTML plugin. So we're going to have to write some HTML here. There is no word or color, so we don't need those things. There's going to be a duration value, and that's it. All right. I made a couple changes here. I think this should work for us. We are declaring an image that's the html element for an image we're saying the source is going to equal something from the images folder right here and then we're going to have to put the file name and i'm just using this temporarily we'll get that file name in a bit for the duration we could pick a number and maybe set them all at 500 and try to change this systematically later on our loop is going to go from zero I mean, this one's just going to do um, four images. We want to go, let's say, do 50. Um, OK. And all, we, we already know we have this variable called all pictures. What I would probably want to do is take the order of the, the images there and totally randomize it. So every time we run this experiment, the 50 pictures that people will see will be different every time. And JS Psych has some functionality for this. Um, okay, I just noticed, I'm not sure, I've been pausing and restarting. I, I hope we didn't skip a whole bunch here. We we're just saying that we're gonna try to randomize our pictures I went over to JS Psych, I, I searched randomization, and there's some different JS Psych randomization uh, functions. So let's see if we scroll down. Shuffle and array. Uh, there's lots of different.
shuffle. This one will be good. We could just grab this. And what we're going to say is all pictures equals I think that should that should do it for us. And what this means is that the order of the pictures is going to be different every time. OK, so I think we could then just put the all pictures into here. And as we go through that loop, it should write in the name of the file. So I'm just going to save this, go back to our experiment, reload. And we have an error. Stroop stimuli is not defined. All right. So later on, we must be calling for the Stroop stimulus stuff. And I thought that this would turn it off. That's OK. This will be called, I mean, actually, here's another Here's another way I could test out that this is working. What, what I'm trying to figure out is, did this code here um, do what I want it to do? So did it make the encoding stimuli array that I was trying to make? I just copied this, going into the console here, press Enter, and I'm looking up encoding stimuli, and let's see what we got. We got an array. Whoops, my mouse just died. So let's hopefully it connects back in a moment here. Come on. Or is it really just dead? I have to pause and uh, recharge my mouse. OK, mouse is working. Let's check out this array. And great, we've got an object in each thing. And then we've got our names of our pictures and they'll be and the duration they'll be presented for. I think we can work with that. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> At this point, what I would probably do is see if I can get the picture showing up, um, see if my strategy is working, and then go ahead and add new things as we go along. Um, before I forget, I'm going to add a phase to this and call this encoding because later on I want to distinguish between uh, the encoding phase where we're presenting images and the recognition test phase. Fixation. Um, in this experiment, we may or may not use a fixation cross. Um, we could present it at the beginning. It's hard to, I, I haven't decided yet if we're gonna do this. We'll probably just do a rapid serial visual display of pictures one at a time with no fixation cross. So the, if we present this, it might be at the beginning, and the, the trial duration would be, let's say, 1,000 milliseconds. Um, display Stroop item. Let's call this a Display Picture. And we will take this from a timeline variable called oh yeah yeah no wow lost it for a second so that we don't need to change this. Um, people won't be responding to anything, actually. So we could have, we don't even need to have choices. There's, a, there's an option called no keys, I believe, that we could put here. No keys. Oh, it's actually an underscore like this.
we have to think about the kind of data we want to store. There are no correct responses here. And Probably want to store the phase. So we could say phase, and we could take this from the phase part. We don't need the unfinish function. For this one, we could call this the encoding procedure. And here we have fixation followed by display stroop item. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of fixation for now. And we'll do display picture, timeline variables are encoding stimuli one here one repetition save put this into the timeline under encoding procedure okay we made several changes let's go see if they work looks like we're getting somewhere Okay, ice cream. Uh, it's not moving forward, but we did see an ice cream. So that's something. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of debugging. All right, I'm over at the HTML keyboard response plugin and we have a stimulus parameter. We set choices to no keys. That should be okay. Stimulus duration. Um, Oh, how did we do that? Display picture. So we didn't have stimulus duration. We could add that stimulus underscore duration. And we can pull this from our variable here that has a duration value. We need a comma at the end of that. And what else? Trial duration. Uh, how long to wait for the participant to make a response? Um, look, if the trial, if the default parameter is null, the trial will wait infinitely for a response. Um, so we we can. And there's also a response ends trial here. So we could set trial duration to zero and response ends trial to false. Trial duration. And is there any other things we should know about? Let's try this for now, see what happens. Oh, it looks like it presented all the pictures and it didn't. So I wonder if the trial duration needs to be the same as the stimulus duration. What is the difference between those two things? How long to display the stimulus? So I think these two numbers have to be the same value. And if we reload, we should see a picture, cow. 
All right, so this is what 500 milliseconds look like. We're just getting that picture every 500 milliseconds. Perfect. I mean, we've, we've pretty much got our encoding phase figured out. The next stage, we would have to figure out how to have slightly different encoding durations. And we could do that uh, in a couple different places. Right now, we're just um, putting a value here, 500. And we, you know, let, let's say we do, um, what were the original values? 125, 250, 500, and 2000. So there's a, there's a, if we wanted to have 10 pictures at 125, 10 at 250, 10 at 500, and say 10 at 1000 and 10 at 2000. Um, there's a couple of ways we could try to do this. We could program it into here and, or we could randomly sample from those times later on when we set the trial duration. So I'm going to modify this a little bit and we'll put it in right at this point. I made a durations variable that we will use. So Im imagine we had an array here that didn't just have these five different durations, but they had um, 10 125s, 10 250s, 10 500s, and so on. It would be, it would have 50 numbers. It would have, um, and what we'd want to do for each image as we assign them into this object is we'd want to, you know, put 125 here. And we do that for the first 10 and then uh, 250 for the next 10 and so on. So rather than making another loop, I'm just going to make this variable have 10 of each of these things in it. And so one way to do that is using the fill property. We could, we could use array fill, and this is going to make the number 125 appear 10 times. Slightly longer to write out. 250. And, but if we do a little copy paste, change this to 500 and 1000 and 2000. Now, this is going to put arrays into arrays. We don't want that. We can flatten this whole thing. Um, and I'm just going to comment this out. So just to make sure that worked, I'm going to reload, look at durations, and it looks like I accomplished the, oh, we made way more than I wanted to. So 125, 250, 500, 2000. Oh, must have messed up. Array.fill125, Array.fill250, Array10500, oh, there it is, 10, 10, 125, 10, 250, 10, 500, 10, 1000, and then Array10.fill2000. So that should make our 50. And let's double check. Great. So we've got one for each. And now I can simply use this information when I set durations. So I could uh, pull from the variable named durations the ith one. And that will populate this encoding stimuli object with the different durations. I'll keep things simple for this procedure. We'll randomize that part. So when it puts the duration in and presents them, we should get a bunch of random durations. Let's see what that looks like.
So it looks like a two second. Whoa, yeah, okay. Skipping, it's a hop skipping and a jump through these images. Some of the presented at different rations were, were good for that. We don't have uh, any interstimulus interval defined. So as soon as an image goes off, another one comes on. And we could consider adding a short interstimulus interval. I just scrolled up to the instructions. There's a post trial gap option. So let me grab that. We'll put that into the display picture right here. Make sure there's a comma. Let's try a post trial gap of 250 milliseconds. Uh, or how about half a second? Let's just feel it out. Now we're having a 500 millisecond offset, a blank interval in between the images. I probably leave it like this, and we have we have uh, almost finished our encoding phase. We would like to save the duration for sure, and so I'll put that in the data. All right, we've finished our encoding procedure. The next step is going to be, so imagine people saw all those pictures. Uh, after that, we want to present them with a recognition test. And the first thing we might do is show them a set of instructions. So I'm just gonna copy the encoding instructions down here and call this uh, recognition instructions. Okay, so these are some really minimal instructions that we could put in there. We'd workshop those. I'll just add in to the timeline, pushing recognition instructions. Okay, so the next piece is we need to create a list of stimuli to present during the recognition memory test. This was the list we made to present our items for the encoding phase. I'm gonna do uh, a little bit of this same strategy down here. And I'll just make a comment, make list of stimuli for recognition test and call this recognition stimuli. I'm going to keep the loop the same going from 0 to 50 and um, we're going to do two things push old stimuli and I'm going to copy this and push new stimuli. So let's do the old ones first. All right, um, what, what we could do here is use our iterator, it's the I here, this is gonna be going through the values zero to 49. Uh, we could go into our encoding stimuli array at the, so this is gonna go through all the different items that were presented before and get the dot stimulus property from, from that object. This is not going to be the encoding phase. This will be the test phase. 
we could get the encoding, the duration that was listed there. So that should, that should work for our old stimuli. There's 50 of those, they'll go from zero to 50. We're gonna to have to create some lures, some new pictures that weren't presented before. And what, what I suggest we do there is we take the file names from any value that was greater than 50. Uh, we didn't select those images, so I'm gonna go 50 plus I here. So we'll start at 51. This again is the encoding or a test phase. And for duration, we could put uh, NA because there was no encoding duration for this one. Um, I forgot to make a variable called recognition stimuli, which will be an empty array. Okay, I think this is gonna work. Let's reload and check it out. Let's see, recognition, and no recognition, stimuli. We've got a hundred of them in there. And we'll, yeah, looks like looks like that worked. So the next thing we would have to do is present a series of trials. One of, we're showing these pictures one at a time and have people judge whether they saw it before. So we should be able to use something similar to these, these two, or, well, we already have fixation, these two things here. So I'm gonna grab this. And, uh, maybe call this display picture recognition. Um, we have a keyboard response here and I suggested the instructions that people would rate their confidence. Um, well, I, let's make this easy for each picture you will judge uh, whether you saw the picture before. Press O if the picture is old and you saw it before and then we can repeat this press n if the picture is new and you did not see it before So our choices then could be an array where we have O as an option and N as an option. Trial duration, um, so we could say, we, I think if we leave this off and we leave off stimulus duration, we can set response ends trial to true, and then people will just move forward after they press a button. We want to save phase data, duration data, and post trial gap of 500, that should be fine. We have a recognition procedure. This will be changed to display picture recognition uh, we've got recognition stimuli randomize order yes repetitions one 
recognition procedure. All right, let's see if this works. All right, we're getting the pictures. I'll pause now and we'll come back for the recognition test. Okay, it looks like we got to the recognition phase and I could press uh, O, N. All right. And then presumably at the end of this, we will see all the data. And then we could look at it and make sure that it seems like the kind of thing we could analyze. Okay, I got to the data, I skipped ahead a bit. As we're looking through, we can see during the encoding phase, uh, it's recording what the picture was, the duration, and the phase it was presented in across trials. We have these different durations randomly. If we scroll down, when we're at the test phase, we can see the picture, uh, Oh, I didn't actually code in the data whether the picture was new or old. That's sort of implicitly coded already in the duration. So if it says a duration that's not NA, that means it was an old picture. That's something I probably want to go back and change. So for example, when we're um, coding our stimuli to be presented for the recognition test, I would probably say something like type, and this is an old type. However, for the new stimuli, we'll put new there. Uh, actually, it probably makes sense to have a correct response as well, that the correct response would be O, and the correct response here would be N. That would be useful later on. Okay, I think that's it for the demo for this recognition experiment. We did, did this, uh, it's bare bones. There's a lot of things we'd want to improve on later on, uh, but this would be, uh, yeah, kind of a minimal example of a recognition experiment where we've got these two phases. We're keeping track of what we presented in the encoding phase, representing some of those things in, in the recognition test phase. There's lots of ways we could have modified this, um, but uh, that's it for the tutorial this week. Next week we'll be back and we'll try to analyze some of this recognition memory data.